dice captain Mark Weber repeatedly guaranteed victory in the Wild West shootout. But the devastating combo of Mark D'Amato and his New York enforcers shut him up by punishing the hot dice in the championship game. Weber is bitter and plans to take out his frustration the old-fashioned way with his fists. Tonight, Mark Weber's retirement tour continues. I had another retirement plan as Atkinson and Brown. Ray Robles is next to be disrespectful. But Richard Brown's partner in pain, Ray Robles, has proven he's not too old to throw blows. I guarantee you that I will put a quad skate up in his face and see how he likes that. Also, keep an eye out for disgraced GM Kenneth Logue III. Does he have the bravado to show his face after his roller derby clean debacle? It's the Riot versus the Hot Dice next on Roller Jam. Studios in Orlando, Florida. The World Skating League is on the air. This is Roller Jam, and we're very happy to have you with us tonight from a packed Roller Jam arena here in Orlando at Universal Studios. And tonight, we have a terrific game for you. And once again, everybody, I'm Rory Marcus, along with Lee Hawk Rearman. And tonight, we bring you the Illinois Riot and the Nevada Hot Dice. And we bring you a game, when we look back to last week, and the debacle that was the Roller Derby Queen contest, we kind of have a cloud hanging over the league in a way. Well, we don't have a queen, I don't, I don't think. Who knows whose name was on that list? I think until they determine who it was, I'm crowning you the interim roller I'm derby queen. I'm not eligible, queen. sorry. But Kenneth Love, this guy has got his work cut out for him. Nobody likes him. He's got this feud continuing with Mark D'Amato. This battle is, is going to continue, and that is the most important, seemingly the biggest story here off the track in the World Skating League. Last week, general manager Kenneth Love hesitated and then said the words, Lindsey Francis for the Roller Derby Queen. Now, Danny Wolf has been looking into this. Broadway Danny's in the infield. What have you got, Danny? Thank you, Rory. Again, the hot topic is the whereabouts of Kenneth Logue III. The last time we saw him, he was handing the trophy reluctantly to Mark D'Amato and the enforcers for winning the Wild West shootout. But guess what? Then he scrammed out of Vegas as quick as he can, obviously embarrassed about what happened in the Roller Derby Queen debacle. Here's what we learned in the last few days. Commissioner Jerry Seltzer deeply, seriously embarrassed about what happened in that contest. Because of that, he has temporarily restrained Kenneth Logue's duties in the World Skating League. Stripped him of some of his power, if you will, in an attempt to bring the skaters and management more together, he has given some of those powers to the official skaters representative. I'm talking about Mark D'Amato. Mark will be my guest at halftime, and we'll talk to him about some of his newly gained powers. Back to you, Rory. Thanks, Danny. You restrained the powers of Kenneth Logue. That'll be interesting to see what Mark D'Amato has in mind with his new powers. Let's talk about tonight's game now, the Nevada Hot Dice and the Illinois Riot. And when you talk about the Hot Dice, you look at a couple of guys on the men's side. Mark Weber is one of them. He uses brute force, and you see him there attacking Sean Atkinson. Some would say Atkinson's his idol, but Weber's done pretty well himself. Now, Jason McDaniel, the athletic one, puts the skates up on the rail, backs his way right into a terrific block. And between those two players, Jason McDaniel and Mark Weber, the Nevada Hot Dice, a very tough uh, duo on the men's side. Well, absolutely. But if you remember in the Wild West shootout, Mark Weber all but guaranteed victory for his Nevada Hot Dice. Of course, he was embarrassed, similar to what Kenneth Logue has been going through. And he has got his work cut out for him. These guys, as you mentioned, are very athletic, wonderful ability. Let's hope he can kind of get it back together here in Orlando because we know he sure as heck can't foretell the future. Well, the Riot with a couple of good players of their own, like Little Richard Brown, Ray Robles. Let's stand by now and let's get those player introductions. And here come the Riot. Patsy Delgado and some of her uh, her women folk have been challenged by King Richard Brown to step up. The women have been a real sore spot for the Riot, Ray. Oh, I don't think he calls them women folk. He has other names for them. And here come the <laughs> Illinois Riot men. You saw Ray Robles skate by, waiting for the grand entrance of the King. And there he is, Richard Brown. The king, he's got a big smile on his face, playing to the crowd. I don't know what the heck he's got the smile about, but coming out of the Wild West shootout with that dismal last place finish. Oh, he's smiling because he's on the track. He figures this is his home, and he's always happy to be here. Now, here come the Nevada Hot Dice women, who, by the way, Hawk, have ditched those showgirl sizzle outfits. Well, I don't know what the heck they're doing, Rory. I kind of was partial toward the metallic outfit that 
Kim the heartbreak, the heartbreaker head on and Shea Brown, I guess, but now she's the leader. She's got some intensity on her face, but I'm disappointed. I love those outfits. Well, she's here and she means business, as you can see by the look on her face. Now the hot dice man coming out. There's Jason McDaniel with a yell for the crowd. And Mark Weber wearing oh. the old-fashioned quad skates, I think, kind of poking fun at the veteran Ray Robles, who wears the quad skates. Well, hey, he might be making fun of DeMotto, Rory. Mark Weber has skated over to our own Broadway Danny Wolf on those old quad skates. Let's go down now to Danny. All right, Mark, I got to ask you, the retirement tour continues, I guess, but the question is, what are you doing on quad skates? <laughs> That's a funny question. I have to show every all these old people, you know, Red Robles. I, I can only skate on quads and inlines because I am the great one. So you're mocking Ray Robles by wearing quads. He's got a fiery Latin temper. I don't think you want to bring that out in him. I ain't got to worry about Ray. Ain't nobody to worry about. And let me ask you finally, Mark D'Amato wears quad skates too, and I know he's your uh, skater's rep. I don't hear you uh, mocking or seeing you mock Mark D'Amato. I have no problems with Mark D'Amato. Me and Mark, you know, we're cool. We're cool. Yeah, but you're going to have problems with me because I'm the Latin Spitfire, brother, and I have a temper you don't believe about yet. Because when you get on that track, it'll be a whole different ball game, brother. And you better believe it. I don't care if you say I'm old, but I will take care of business when you are without you. Roller Rules, brought to you by Dial 1-800-AT&T for collect calls. There are four six-minute periods. The women skate periods one and three. The men skate periods two and four. There are five skaters per team, two jammers, and three blockers. The blockers wear white helmets. The jammers have the black helmet with the stripe. Points are scored when jammers lap opposing team members. Here's an example of what I was just talking about. The jammer for the green team breaks out from the pack and circles the track. For each member of the red team that he or she passes, one point is earned. Patsy Delgado, will she step up to the challenge issued her by the king, King Richard? And Shea Brown, she's put away the metallic outfit. She's got a new look of seriousness on her face, Rory. Game is underway. The game is underway. The first jam of the night, and right away, Patsy Delgado gets out for the Illinois Riot, number 59. She's on the old quad skates, too, although I didn't see Mark Weber mention anything about her. Kim Hart is out there for the Nevada Hot Dice, and down goes Kim Hart as Crystal Schneider and Patsy Delgado get out together. The Riot trying to get on the scoreboard first. Well, Patsy Delgado, you're seeing a very aggressive beginning by her. She may have taken the words of little Richard Brown in the challenge, and she may be showing up and wants to show the whole world skating league quads or not, she can play. Little Richard Brown, you see him standing there in the infield trying to get the pack to slow down a little bit so Delgado and Schneider can catch up and talk about a leader. Shea Brown in the back of the pack, tying things up, trying to keep the ride off the scoreboard, and she takes on two at one time and knocks them both down. And now again, just for good measure. And look at the intensity in her face, Rory. She has promised that she was going to come out here and make a statement early that she is no longer in the shadow of anybody. Kim Hart or maybe Denise Lowe to the floor of the Sun Dogs. She's always felt like she was in somebody's shadow. She wanted to be the leader. And you see her taking that aggression and putting it into action. My goodness. She, look, she looks like Tim Washington out there, maybe, the New York Enforcers. There was no scoring in that first jam. And here we go again as the uh, hot guys who, whose women got a little earful from their captain, Richard Brown, a minute ago, get Millie Guthrie out there to lead this jam. Millie Guthrie out in front. And chasing her is Mindy Smith of the Hot Dice. The two of them come together now near the back of the pack, and Smith gets the best of it. Now the Hot Dice with a chance to break on top and get the lead in this game. And they do. Mindy Smith picked up one or two. Shea Brown put somebody into the rail, and Smith is still going. Now she comes up to Delgado in the middle of the pack. Mindy Smith picked up at least two, and now she calls it off. We'll see what Sean Corbin awards them. He gave them three, so three hot dice points there. Well, Shane Brown once again goes right after the nemesis, Patsy Delgado. Before Corbin got there, Shea Brown must have thrown five or six right hands right into the ribcage area. What's gotten into her? 
Welcome back, everybody. It's 3-2. The hot guys lead it. And Shay Brown had intensity on her face coming out for the intros, Rory, and she has not disappointed any of us with her physical play right out of the shoot. And now she's out on a jam. So Shea Brown grabs the jammer's helmet and says, here, let me have it. I'll get you some points. And look who she's out there with, her sister. Shauna Brown, who goes down. Sister against sister, and there's Shauna picking herself up as Shea Brown comes around to try and put more points on the board. Right now, the hot dice in the lead in the game. Oh, good quick move there by Shea Brown. Looks like she can do it all. Blocking, scoring, picks up another couple of points. Puts her hands out to her side and is going to say, isn't anybody going to hit me? Nope, not this time. Over the rail goes Delgado. And Shea Brown still out there on the jam. And up once again against her sister, Shauna Brown. Now she calls it off, and Shauna gives her a little sisterly elbow for the trouble. With sisters like that, who needs neighbors they really don't like? But Shea Brown, I don't like the outfit, but I like her play. Shea Brown making a statement here early in this game, and the X-Men celebrate. The women skating the first period, the Nevada Hot Dice in the white and green, and the Illinois Riot in the red and blue with gold numbers. And right now, the Hot Dice have the 5-2 lead here early in the game. Quick pace to the game here in the first period. Once again, out on the jam for the Riot, Crystal Schneider breaks away. She's from Greensboro, North Carolina, and they get two jammers out now. And looks like they're conspiring together, Hawk. Well, and you, you really have to wonder which of these Riot women are going to step up. We talked about at the beginning, Patsy, Patsy Delgado was looked to perhaps to emerge as a real scorer. But these guys really have to find someone. And right now, maybe Crystal Schneider and Millie Guthrie are doing that. But somebody really has to step up, Rory. Are these guys going to be in for a long season? Because you can't do it only on one side of the ball. Not stepping up, but stepping back. Shea Brown gets knocked out of the play by Patsy Delgado. She never saw Delgado there waiting for her. And Brown won't like that at all as the riot gets on the scoreboard. That's the first time that Delgado has really asserted herself in this game. And allowed Schneider and Millie Guthrie to get the points. And now Delgado's up there against the rail, kind of yelling at the crowd. Richard Brown was clapping his hands. And the riot had a good moment in this game. Well, we just talked about Schneider and Millie Guthrie trying to emerge as perhaps the scorers for the Ryan. Unfortunately for Patsy Delgado, those quad skates don't afford her a lot of agility and speed. If she's going to get it done, it's probably going to have to be as a blocker. There's just no way you can go as fast as the gals on the inlines. It's 8-5 to five right now. The Ryan on top. And the uh, Hot Dice looking to get back into the lead in this game. Mindy Smith out on the jam, and she's all by herself. Well, she's got some speed, doesn't she? Mindy Smith coming up to the back of the pack. The dice doing a good job inside the pack, and right by Delgado goes Mindy Smith. Now she picks up another one. And she gets towards the middle of the pack now, trying to get some more as Patsy Delgado tries to recover. Well, Mindy Smith's a good skater. There's Delgado back there again now to try and block her. She comes up to Patsy, who completely missed her and goes flying. She's picked up the same two over and over again, so not getting a lot of points. Norma Marshall back to block now, and Mindy Smith calls it off. But a good jam, and let's see how many they give her. Sean Corbin says four, I believe. No, he gave her three, and that ties the game up. Mindy Smith able to tie it at eight. Well, and Shea Brown, who was busy blocking on that jam, didn't waste any time mixing it up with Patsy Delgado once again. Patsy Delgado is not one to shy away from a little fist to cuff herself. No, she's not, but her hair doesn't look as good as it did a minute ago because Shea Brown had a big handful of it. See? Look at that. Coming up, Mark Weber and the Hot Dice. And remember, Weber with those quad skates taunting Ray Robles. We'll have to go up against Robles and the Illinois Riot. Stay with us. Are you fast enough to be a jammer? Tough enough to be a blocker? This one. Think you've got what it takes to be the next Mark D'Amato or Stacy Blitch? If you do, Roller Jam wants you. To try out, call the Roller Jam Training Center at 407-324-9294 today. We're back at Roller Jam Arena in Orlando. Shea Brown had quite a first period for the Hot Dice women. She's with Broadway Danny Wolf right now. 
Tremendous first period. I mean, you were up to the. Always, do I not always skate tremendous? Well, you seem to be on every play. I mean, you were tearing them apart. What's going what on? What do you expect, Danny? That's why I'm taking over the women's team. Only thing Kim Hart leaves is the men's to her bedroom. Well, Kim Hart looks around as though to say, "What do you mean by that?" Well, if Shea Brown's enthusiasm is contagious, the Ryan are in trouble. And Mark Weber, he's on the retirement tour. How will he do on these quad skates? Well, we'll see in this period. And the king, Richard Brown, he always has something to say. Quad skates, inline skates. He's a he's a master at physical and finesse player. We're ready to go. Period number two underway in the matter on the track. We're tied up now at 8-8. Eight, eight. The jammers get out. They get out quick. Wow, one of the... Uh, Ryan just went over the rail before the period practically even started. That was Travis Wills getting bumped. And now out of the jam for the riot. That's number 54, Mike Tanner. And Mike Tanner is out there against the uh, hot dice Christian Salvia, who goes down. And now the hot dice with Ray Robles in back to lead the charge through the pack. Look at him pick up speed. Oh, knocked wow. down two at one time. Falling off the jam. The Illinois Riot will settle for two points, and Robles goes to work. And Ray Robles, we talked about the one-two punch of him and little Richard Brown, and we also mentioned Mark Weber spouting his mouth about his retirement tour. Well, Mark Weber, you got it done after the fact, but Ray Robles got it done on the jam. Ray Robles has been skating for a long time on quad skates or any other skates you want to talk about. And right there, he took two men out and added a little quad skate in the back for good measure. Andy Wallace trying to get out from the back of the pack, but instead, Mo Sanders emerges for the riot. Now, this guy can skate. Mo Sanders can fly around that track, and he's out there by himself right now. Trying to catch him from behind for the Illinois riot is Micah Martin. And Sanders actually slipped down a little too fast for his own good. Look at the pack just working. Richard Brown and Ray Rope is just working over the middle of the pack, Mark Weber. Well, Mark Weber was talking a lot before the game about his retirement tour. Of course, he wore the quad skates. I tell you, I had mentioned that those quad skates might not be the best way for Mark Weber to get around. Well, they took full advantage of the lack of experience he has on that mode of transportation. You see the gaze of little Richard Brown. They call a holding. Look at Ray. What do you mean holding? That's about the only thing I didn't do to him. I never held him. I kicked him. I elbowed him. I threw him up against the rail. I took him out of the pack, but I didn't hold him. Well, and once again, Mark Weber on those quad skates is not himself, Rory. He's usually very agile. We all know that the inline skates afford you much more lateral mobility. He doesn't have it. And, you know, you can make a statement before the game, but, young man, take them off and go with what brought you here. That's foolish. Travis Wills is out there for the uh, riot. Oh, they bumped heads. It looked like they bumped heads on purpose. He's out there with Jason McDaniel. They did bump heads on purpose. McDaniel heads him out of the play like it's a soccer ball. Well, Jason McDaniel, we talked about him in the open, and here he comes up to little Richard Brown, who says, I've got something for you right here. Hit me with your head. I like it. Brown rips him with the right elbow repeatedly. Whoa! Oh! Brown goes down, and Weber was waiting for him right there. He and McDaniel celebrate. Well, he calls it roll them bones. The result is that grimace on the face of Richard Brown. I guess he didn't need quad skates to pull off his patented move. But Mark Weber seems to be going hot and cold. One jam, he's getting the tar knocked out of him the next. Boy. And this is great teamwork right here. You see his teammate, the X-Man, Jason McDaniel, the X-Man, Mark Weber, and the pain on the man, the king he calls himself, Little Richard Brown. <laughs> Rick Robles just hit Mark Weber with an elbow right to the mouth. And Weber turned around as though he was stunned and hit him right back. Now Weber whips his uh, jammer out. That's Micah Martin, and out goes Mo Sanders right with him. Sanders outweighs Micah Martin, but uh, so do some of the characters at Universal Studios. <laughs> and they're together on the jam right now. Sanders on the inside, Micah Martin up top. Martin for the hot dice, took Mo Sanders out of there. But now he has to contend with Robles. And right now, the last thing on Martin's mind is what kind of skates is Robles wearing? Weber comes back to help out. Now a whip. They get by him. They got by Robles. 
for the point. And Mo Sanders trying to come up late gets knocked down by Weber. And there they are, chin to chin. Quad skates on Weber. Well, Mark Weber has two things really working against him, Larry. He's outnumbered in the squawking department with Robles and Richard Brown. But he also, once again, has these quad skates on him. Well, a man getting a parking ticket would be outnumbered in the squawk department by Brown and Robles. <laughs> And there go the riots. They get the jammer out. Mike Tanner's out there by himself. But uh, here comes a whip to the Illinois riot jammer. That's number 36, Jason McDaniel. This is the last jam of the first half. Weber's in the back of the pack. Weber grabs his man and throws him into the railing. And now the hot guys looking to pick up some more points. They have right now a four-point lead. Robles is back there, and Robles is getting some punishment from Weber. He's being held. The referee warns him. I think Weber doesn't care as much about the points as he does about the move of McDaniel. The teamwork of McDaniel and Weber again takes Ray Robles out of the play. Well, with Jason McDaniel, we saw this emotional high that he gets on in Las Vegas. He hasn't missed a beat coming here to the, the confines of Orlando. And you see the intensity and the celebratory attitude in his face. I can do nothing but pump up his team. That move that he does, we saw it unveiled in Las Vegas. Mark Weber, thank you, my brother. Ray Robles, you ain't seen nothing yet. The Hot Dice have taken the lead at halftime. It's 12 to 8. We'll be right back to Orlando with halftime highlights. WSL Halftime Report is brought to you by Starburst Hard Candy. Give it some juice. Welcome back to Roller Jam Arena. Rory Marcus and Lee Hawk Rearman. We are at halftime. The Nevada Hot Dice have a four-point lead, 12 to 8 over the Illinois Riot. There's been no shortage of action and no shortage of stars so far. The team play on the men's side for the Hot Dice of Mark Weber and Jason McDaniel. And on the women's side, little Richard Brown of the Riot berating his own women. Well, absolutely. But I tell you what, in the second half, I really look for Shea Brown to get tired and Mark Weber to get tired. They're outnumbered two to one because Ray Robles and little Richard Brown are outnumbering Mark Weber. And Patsy Delgado and Shea Brown herself are outnumbering Shea Brown. Look for those two to get tired. I think it's going to be a riot second half. But Shea Brown did set the tone in this game. Let's take a look at some of the action from the first half now. She skated onto the track like a woman in a bad mood. And I think the Illinois riot skaters would agree with that. But she didn't entirely own the period as she goes down here to the hand of Patsy Delgado. And she looked like she was barking. And speaking of barking, Weber has promised a retirement to her. I don't think these two veterans are ready to go. I look for Weber to get tired in the second half, Rory. Should be a terrific second half between the Hot Dice and the Illinois Riot, but there are other issues to be resolved. One of those is how much power does Mark D'Amato have in this league now? He's with the New York Enforcers, of course, and he is also with our own Broadway Danny Wolf. All right, thank you, Rory. I am here with the official skaters representative, Mark D'Amato, and you're on quite a roll, buddy. The Enforcers victorious in the Wild West shootout, right. and now we've just learned you've even gained more power right. by Kenneth Logue having some of his uh, powers taken away by Jerry Self. Listen to me, you little midget freak. I was minding, I was minding my own business, doing my charity work, and being a, mo a role model for the children across America. Yeah. Kenneth Logue decided to step into my business. Before I'm through with him, I guarantee he will be selling peanuts in the stands. Well, we'll have to see if that happens. How about the death list? Is everything going okay with your death list, Mark? The, I have uh, three teams that are compliant with the articles of the death list. The Enforcers, the Dice, and the uh, Rustlers. And I was going to say, the Hot Dice, you seem to like this team. I guess they uphold to your death standards. You know what? The Hot Dice are a bunch of chumps just like the other teams in this league. However, as I said, they are compliant with the articles of the death list. Really quickly, talk about the riot. The Illinois riot, the team we see over here, that was Kenneth Logue's creation. That was his throwback team. Comment right. on the riot. Right, and you see how far they've come. They are the scab team in the league. They're no good. They'll never be any good. All right, Mark D'Amato, we'll see what happens with your newly gained power. Right now, back to you, Rory and Hawk.
All right, Danny, and our own Julie Lynch has looked into some of D'Amato's powers, and here's what she found out. Is Enforcer Captain Mark D'Amato really a misunderstood man? Yes, he does spend most of his time picking fights and beating on people, but maybe his newfound power will help him to mature. Before Enforcer Mark D'Amato became union leader, and before his team became Wild West shootout champions, Mark D'Amato claims he was content with his relaxing lifestyle. His days consisted of karate lessons, interior decorating, and leisurely airplane rides. Now D'Amato claims he's bogged down with work at the WSL sweatshop, the World Skating League headquarters. Much of his time is spent pondering important league decisions. He claims he's irate because the WSL forced him to use their company car. The stress of the job has forced D'Amato into intense meditation. And although his physical therapy is terribly painful, we found him there religiously day after grueling day. Some might think a tattooed monster like D'Amato is underqualified for running a million dollar league. He assures us he's doing fine. Well, I, it's nice to see Mark D'Amato happy. Uh, isn't it? Rory, he's a mess. I'm always concerned for his happiness. Well, there's Patsy Delgado as the women get set to come on to the track for the next period. Patsy Delgado for the riot. And of course, Shea Brown wanting to continue to dominate in the second half. What an action packed first half we've had. 12 8, the hot dice lead. There's the kind of action Hawk uh, likes to talk about. Uh, that is what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about? That's what I thought. That's what I'm talking about. Here we go. Period number three. The women on the track. And for the Illinois Raya, Crystal Schneider gets out first. And she's out there against uh, the Nevada Hot Dice Gemmer. And I think that's Mindy Smith. Indeed it is. Mindy Smith takes Crystal Schneider and says, yeah, Rory, it's me, Mindy. I can knock him down with the best of them. Well, and Mindy Smith has really added a lot of aggression to her speed from last year, Rory. We saw this in Las Vegas in the Wild West shootout. She's got a whole new attitude, and she seems to somewhere have got a punch. I don't know where she gets it, but she's not only fast, but she can also play physical. And if you see that, she seems to be conspiring with Shea Brown. Speaking of aggression, right? There's Shea Brown, Mindy Smith, and there's the whip right under the legs and under the double block of Patsy Delgado and Shauna Brown. Let's see how many they give her. Two points. She got them both. Well, hopefully, Shea Brown has figured out that she can actually play a game and make a statement. She doesn't have to keep talking, but what a great between-the-leg whip to Mindy Smith. And that's absolutely what the Hot Dice have to stick with, their physical ability, because the women, both on the whole team of the Ram, but especially the women, just do not match up with the physical ability of the Nevada Hot Dice. Not so far, anyway, and right now with a 14-8 lead, the Hot Dice out there again for the Illinois Riot. Millie Guthrie gets out on the jam. There you see Millie Guthrie with the black knee pads and the red uniform, and she's out there against Laura Weintraub of the Hot Dice. It's the first time we've seen Weintraub jam tonight, and she's out of the jam right now as she gets sent into the rail. That leaves Millie Guthrie, who picks one up. Nice little move high up on the track. And now she slips down. The jam continues, however, for another 15 seconds. The Hot Dice have a chance to pick up some points as well as Weintraub is caught up. But Millie Guthrie with some fancy skating, picking up the points. Just three seconds left in the jam. Good job done by Millie Guthrie. Well, we talked about Millie Guthrie and or Crystal Schneider having to really emerge as someone for the women to score some points, Little Richard Brown has challenged the women. And Millie Guthrie, we saw her in the first half, showing that she can skate. Right here, we're seeing it once again. And she went right around Mindy Smith, who we were just talking about as being a very agile, apt skater. Went around a little Kim Hart, does a little spin move. But after all of that, all they gave her was two points. But they kept the jammer helmet on, Rory. I think Little Richard Brown never to miss an opportunity sees that she's got a little bit of spark under her. He's just desperately trying to find somebody. He's going with what got him here so far. He's looking through that women's team and saying, who have I got? Who can get me some points out there? And he says, Millie, take that helmet again and get out there again. So she does against two hot dice jammers. 14 to 10, the hot dice lead. Millie Guthrie takes care of one of them. And now 
She's got Mindy Smith in front of her. So it's Smith for the hot dice in the white and Millie Guthrie again in the red for the Illinois Riot. Guthrie goes down low and puts the right leg up and takes out Smith. Wow, she's gonna try it two in a row now to pick up some points. But Shea Brown's back there to block. And she puts that right elbow right into the chest and then whacks her with another one. Trying to get by down low, can't do it. And now getting a little help from Patsy Delgado who knocks down, or from Mashana Brown rather, who knocks her sister Shea Brown down. Well, I, I talked about Shea Brown maybe getting tired. Patsy Delgado, some of the other Illinois Riot women, they're scoring some points here today, Roy. That, uh, that tongue lashing I'm sure they got from Little Richard Brown all this week and before the game, maybe having an impact. After all of that, Millie Guthrie didn't get any points because Sean Corbin called a holding on Shauna Brown. You know what you call that? You call that Millie Vanilli. Is that what you call that? Maybe not. Hmm. 14 to 10, the uh, hot dies on top. And out there now for the Illinois ride is number 57, Crystal Schneider. Brown watching with a critical eye from the bench, his women's team. And now he's over there conspiring with uh, Ray Robles as they talk about the fourth period still to come when the men get back on the track. But Kim Hart out on the jam. Oh, nice elbow. Maybe Kim Hart's a little upset about the fact that she hasn't done much in this game because she sent Schneider down to the track and hard. Now, trying to get by Delgado. Here comes Kim Hart. The heartbreaker reaches the pack and gets a little help inside there from Shea Brown to pick up a couple of points and calls the jam off. Four points scored that time by the Nevada Hot Dice. And once again, the sheer athletic ability of the Nevada Hot Dice emerges. If these guys just stick with their guns, the Riot can in no way, shape, or form keep up with them. Kim Hart goes to the bench as the Hot Dice have taken an eight-point lead. This will be the final jam of the women's period. It's 18 to 10 in favor of the Hot Dice. And trying to get out there on the jam for the Illinois Riot, Ileana Bonilla gets out for the first time. She's a high up on the track and tracking her for the uh, Hot Dice is number 34, Laura Weintraub. So it's Weintraub and Bonilla this time. Trying to score the points, and Bonilla won't get any points that way, laying on the ground off the track, having been railed by Weintraub. Well, you have to ask yourself, how is Laura Weintraub going to respond to the fact that Shea Brown has said that she wants to be the leader of the showgirls? Kim Hart is kind of being shoved out as the leader of whatever's left of the showgirl sizzle. A question mark still is Laura Weintraub and how she will react, Rory. Well, if there's one thing that we've never seen in this league, it's team dissension. <laughs> Only in the broadcast booth. <laughs> Laura Weintraub reaches the back of the pack, trying to pick up some points, getting an assist back there. Now she gets to Delgado, who has been knocked down already by Shea Brown, and let's see what they give her. The helmet slams down, and there goes Shea Brown up to pay another visit to Patsy Delgado. She says the period might be over, but our feud is far from over. Well, we, we seem to have started the first period like this. Why not end the third period the same way? And of course, the hair always, they always have to go there to these women. I don't know if the men will go to the hair, but if they do, they're going to have trouble grabbing a hold of this guy, Jason McDaniel in the Nevada Hot Dice, ready to go against the old man. The old king's not ready to give up his throne. Richard Brown of the Illinois Riot, ready to get back onto the track. During halftime, Mark Weber made a little change. It has to do with the equipment. Now Ray Robles is with Danny Wolf. All right, Ray, I guess Mark Weber's retirement tour didn't work out as planned. He is back on his inline skates. I told you guys before, I'm not going anywhere. And as you can see, he's back on his training wheels again on his inline skates. Also, you guys trail by nine points. What is it going to take to get the ride back in this game? You don't have to worry about it because we can take care of business. And let me tell you, we will. Good luck, Ray. Thank you very much. Well, he says they're going to take care of business. They better get after it because they're way behind, Rory. Fourth period underway, the fourth and a final period, we should say. The Hot Dice have a big lead in this game, and Micah Martin gets out of the jam for the Hot Dice in green and white. They lead it by nine points as we get going here in the final period. Mike Tanner's out there for the Illinois Riot. The Riot have a long way to go and only six minutes to get there. Sean Corbin warning Micah Martin, no elbows. When has anybody ever gone by that? 
And now Richard Brown knocks Micah Martin out of the play. That allows Tanner to go get some points. And Ray Robles destroying the pack. As Tanner goes through and scores the points, Robles has one more to take care of, and he takes him down hard, Randy Garrett. Wow, you talk about getting back into it quickly. Robles high fives with the fans, and all of a sudden it's 20 to 15 hot dice. Well, and Ray Robles told our Broadway Danny Wolf he could take care of business, doesn't matter what mode of transportation he's wearing. Well, he proved it right there. We always talk about these Illinois riots being ugly. Well, that's a little bit ugly right there, but it got the job done as he paved the way for his teammate to score some points. Ray Robles put his money where his mouth is. Ugly but effective, and Ray Robles, I think if he was on a tricycle, would find a way to break up that pack. He knows what he's doing out there, believe me, and so does Richard Brown. You can never count the riot out of a game. And now they get Mo Sanders out again. Sanders is quick. Big Sean Davidson gives a whip, though, to Jason McDaniel, and he's out on the chase. McDaniel gets another whip. Almost too much for him to handle, but he gets there and takes Sanders down. Jason McDaniel is tough. Well, right there you saw a wonderful example of his speed as he just blew right by Mo Sanders and made up a lot of track quick, Rory. Oh, he got the double whip, and there's Robles, who slips and falls. And now Brown goes down. McDaniel a chance to get some more, and he does. Jason McDaniel in and out, zigzag, and Ryan players going over the rail and falling all over the track. Here's another one, and some more. McDaniel gets up, calls it off, and says, these old men can't keep up with me. Well, whatever you say about these hot dice, especially the X-Men being hot and cold, you can't argue that they always bring us excitement. And Jason McDaniel is just a man on a mission this season in terms of just making it showtime. And I don't think Ray Robles knows what the heck he was watching, but Jason McDaniel, he goes high, he goes low. He even has enough left to hoop and holler. He got it all done, and he got it done with excitement there, Rory. Another look. Brown thought he had him in his sights at one point, and Jason McDaniel just kind of puts his arms up and says, hey, come on, Richard, take another crack at me. And over the rail he goes. 23 to 15 is the score. And as you see, Ray Robles gets sent into the rail by Mark Weber. That was a shot before the pack had even formed. 23 15, the hot dice have the lead. Brown does not have a jammer helmet. He's mixing it up in the uh, pack right now. And getting out there quickly is number 33, Micah Martin, for the hot dice. The Illinois Riot cannot afford to fall much further behind in this game. They send Andy Wallace out. He and Martin get tangled up. Wallace tumbles into the infield, and Martin gets up to lead the jam again. Micah Martin, six foot, about 110 pounds. I mean, there's not much to him going up and down, but he can skate. Well, and right now, there's not, not much to Mark Weber. Where has he been? He came down, apparently he changed his skates from the quads to the inlines, and he's nowhere to be seen so far in this, in this period, Rory. Ray Robles back there to block again. There's Weber sending somebody into the rail. Now he's going to help out uh, Micah Martin. Here's Weber to lead the charge against Robles. But he jumps over Robles. They both go down. Getting the point is Martin. Two seconds left in the jam. Down goes Martin. Here comes Robles to add a little insult to injury. But they picked up one more point. And Ray Robles gets back into the infield. We're going to take a break right here with the hot dice still up by nine, 24-15. Two minutes, 10 seconds left in the game, and the Riot desperate for some points. They send Mo Sanders out of the jam. Sanders gets out there ahead of the pack. Micah Martin trying to break out of there for the hot dice, but so far unable to do it as the Riot, desperately needing some points, now get two jammers out there to lead the pack. As out there with Mo Sanders is number 54, Mike Tanner, and both the Riot jammers go up over and out over the rail. The hot dice down by nine. They need as many as they can get. Mark Weber goes back to block. And Weber sends an elbow into Sanders' midsection. Robles is back there to defend. They're going to try and run away from him, it looks like. There they go. And Robles and Brown will try and pick him off one by one. There's Brown getting one to pick up two points for the Riot. And now Brown sends Micah Martin down. And the Riot getting back into this game. Two more to get. If they can both get him, they'll be right back Whoa. in it. And they get one of them as Brown kicks his way past Sean uh, Davison. And they got them all. They got them all. And they, well, 
they call him the king, little Richard Brown. We haven't heard from him all game as Mo Sanders celebrates a little bit, Rory. And young man, you have a reason to celebrate, but the king, little Richard saving the best for last. Oh, wow. this guy is fearless. Little Richard Brown, I don't know how old he is. It doesn't matter because he can still play this game. And now the riot have a one-point lead, thanks in large measure to Brown. You know, he was on an all-star team a few years ago, playing in Japan, got knocked over the railing and broke both his wrists at the same time, trying to break his fall. But now he's back on the track here in Roller Jam, and with plays like that, he'll be around a long time. 25-24, the Illinois Riot with a one-point lead and time for one more jam. And look who has a jammer helmet on, but the man we were just talking about, the king, little Richard Brown. Trying to win the game for the hot dice. 30 seconds left on the jam. Robles goes back. Robles locks hands with Bill Rokeberg. And they'll try and stop Jason McDaniel. Weber comes back to assist. And they have 20 seconds left on the jam now. They need one to tie and two to win. Here comes McDaniel. Here comes Weber. And now they go! McDaniel spins over the top and wins the game for the hot dice. What a move! Well, he calls it the twister. He goes with the twister, and Mark Weber set it up for the twister. Any M, any M is a twister, and more importantly, it's a hot dice victory. The Nevada Hot Dice get the victory as Mark Weber leaps in the air, and then Jason McDaniel over the top. What an incredible move by both Weber and McDaniel. They team up to help the Hot Dice win this game by one. They needed one to tie, two to win. They get the two. So let's go down on the infield now with Jason McDaniel and Broadway Danny Wolf. All right, Jason, you really stepped it up, especially at the end of the game. Talk about Mark Weber. He started the game wearing quads and then had to switch back to his inlines. I mean, did you think he was goofing off? I mean, was it inappropriate? Because you really stepped up your game then. Well, as you saw and everybody else here in this arena saw or not, I had to step it up a little bit. Weber's doing his own thing on the quads. That's his business. I'm sorry I stay out of that, but we're going to get this together, and we're going to be the top team in the WSL. All right, Jason, thank you. And what is all the yelling behind me? Richard Brown, come here. Jason, I'm talking to my team. Come here. You are berating. Yeah. I got to say, I am sick and tired of my whippy girls feel like I'm here and put together a team that's supposed to dominate this league. These people giving me a nine-point deficit that I got to come and overcome. Hands are going to roll. You don't treat the king that way. I am the king and everybody is my subordinate. And why aren't you on your knees? I'm not going to go on my knees. I'm going to ask you one more question. This team was Kenneth Lopes experiment, if you will, a throwback team. He gave you full control. It's not working out, though, Richard. It is working out. I have a few problems in my girls' field that I will correct. They don't get their act together. Heads will roll. Yeah. It is working out. If I'm on the team, it works out. Well, Richard Brown's saying it's all going to work out. Only time will tell. Back to you, Rory and Hawk. He wasn't saying it was all going to work out. He was screaming it's all going to work out. I think that's a key indication that these Riot are in trouble, Rory. He's an unhappy king. And speaking of unhappy, how about Logue and the roller derby queen fiasco that he engineered? Well, the Hot Dice win at 26-25. Thanks for being with us. We're out of here. See you next time on Roller Jam.